Let's pray. Lord, uh, you knew everything we mentioned tonight, but we needed to share those with each other. And Lord, we, we share those prayer requests because our heart goes to you because you're the answer. You are the God of all. You are the God who can. You are the God who's greater than any sickness, that's greater than any heartache. Lord, you are there and close to us when we go through things that uh, we do not understand. Thank you, Lord, for storms that push us and stretch us, that help us to find the end of ourselves, where we can find the beginning of you, to teach us trust, to teach us that you're a great big God, to teach us to walk by faith and not by sight, to go by uh, what you say, not by what we feel. I thank you for a church that loves you. I thank you for a church that acts like you. Father, there are many needs in our country. Uh, we do pray for this election that is coming. Put it in your hands. And Lord, we know you have a perfect will. And Lord, we know you also have a permissive will, but we pray for your perfect will. We pray not um, what we want, but what you are going to use in the great and mighty way that fits in your plans for your glory and for our benefit. But Lord, our country needs you, desperately needs you. Lord, uh, this city uh, needs you. Our families Father, we've probably got brokenness in just about every family here. Probably many prayer requests that were entering people's minds, but they didn't voice them, those unspoken requests. And a lot of them were probably family. A lot of them were probably close friends and people we work with. And Lord, we pray for this uh, person. We don't even know her last name, but you know every hair on her head. Pam, Lord, we pray for... Um, what, what a terrible thing it would be to be homeless. Lord, the couple I saw this morning with nothing but a backpack and a blanket. Father, um, the struggles. You know, life is hard for many people, Lord, even if they have jobs. But Lord, without jobs, and this virus has just done a number on, on us in so many ways. And Lord, uh, for the one that called me today in anxiety, and Lord, for the one that I... Uh, spoke with today that's looking for, for the answer for that decision that, uh, that they need to hear from you on. And Lord, for the one that um, I had breakfast with that's heart is broken over the loss of a loved one. Father, um, it's great to be able to come and to speak a prayer and to go all the way into the inner sanctum, the throne room in glory. There is no veil that hides you from us. There is no break in our uh, communication. You hear everything. And Lord, the, the power that you release upon the Holy Spirit is able to touch every person in the world. And Lord, sometimes I know our prayers are time delayed or circumstance delayed. And Lord, we pray them here, but they hit the place that Lord, our, our prayers are directed and Lord, we are grateful that you are alive in those things. So Lord, uh, tonight, open our ears, our heart to your word. Father, it is not about human wisdom at all. It is not about our righteousness, our abilities. Lord, it is about uh, who you are for us, in us, with us, and through us. So Lord, speak to us because we need you. So move us from where we are to where your word would have us to be. Lord, give us a heart that's open to conform. And Lord, part of this we're going to be talking about tonight is future tense. Just about all of it's going to be future tense. And Lord, though uh, you've perfectly got those things already figured out, yet you gave this for us to, to study and learn, not just so that we could have a knowledge of it, but Lord, that it would impact our lives. So in the ways that you want the word tonight to shape our will, and our minds and our thoughts into the image of you. Lord, move us close to you. Often we say, Lord, come put your arms of love around us and draw us close. Lord, let me just run to your presence and fall before your, your, your precious presence. And Lord, may all that is said and done tonight be for your honor and glory. And Lord, we don't take for granted the privilege of coming to your house. It wasn't too long ago we didn't have that. 
But Lord, we have it tonight and we thank you. We thank you for the technology for those that are uh, with us online. Lord, they may they feel the same greeting, be a part of this prayer and of this uh, look into your word. And Lord, all the prayers that they needed prayed for as well, you bless those as well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you have your Bibles open to the book of Revelation, chapter number 20, um, I make no promises on how far we're going to get, and I say that so that uh, last week I had something I wanted to get to. Tonight, when I get to that place, I'm just going to stop. Y'all good with that? Oh, can I give you all praise? The Braves won today. Took them 13 innings. They won first Amen, hallelujah. Wild card, yeah. So um, I, I'm just praying for, um, uh, I, I noticed uh, on both teams, some of them, I know some of them are Christians, and they do certain things after they get a hit or something like that. And... Uh, this time of year, more people are watching, and I just hope God gets great glory out of all of those things. Amen? And for the, for the kids uh, on Friday night uh, playing football, Gibson scored a touchdown this past week. Amen? Um, we just uh, pray God's protection for them. And uh, all these teams are doing all these things, and doesn't seem like very many COVID cases, does it? So uh, maybe we're getting wise. I don't know. Revelation, if you're not there, you just quit looking. But Revelation chapter 20, I want us to, last week we, we talked a little bit about the millennium, what it would be like during the millennium. But l let me just put it forth in, in this way. It will be peaceful. The Lord will reign. There will be no crime. There will be no need for police. There will be no armies. There will be no martial law. There will be no force because Christ will be there. It will be the earth as it was planned for and wanted to be like it was in the Garden of Eden. And the blooming of this world, though the, the taint of sin will still be here. Leaves will still die in the fall. Uh, those things will come at a future tense when God will give us a new heaven and a new earth. But there will be things that will be done in a, in a wonderful way. And, and really the age will be kind of like it was before the flood, uh, the living age for those people. Those that have been raptured and have their new body, uh, they will be ageless. Amen? We'll have that, uh, that body that will be uh, uh, shaped still for work. I hope you're good with that shaped still for work and though Christ will reign on this earth we will still be clothed amen and and clothing is one of those things that remember when God uh I, I said this sometime last year in one of my sermons I said that uh, we we get back to the beginning it would be like uh it was when Adam and Eve were naked before God and and were not ashamed but because of their sin they had to cover up now like in a marriage relationship, they, they can be open and not ashamed, right? But um, uh, in this world, we cover up things. And even in that time of the millennium, we will still be clothed. Listen, Christ will even be clothed. Christ will be clothed. So uh, there's still that veil of walking during the time of the millennium. And understand, those who had the mark of the beast <clears throat> were killed. Those who bowed the knee to the Antichrist were killed in that last battle. They're gone, right? Now, there, are, there are, was a group of people, though, that were not believers in God, in Christ, but still did not bow the knee to the Antichrist and take his mark. And they will continue to live. They didn't die in that last battle, and they will continue to live in this new regime of Christ here on this earth and and it will be a, a wonder for them people will be born during that time these there will be children um, it says that uh, 
you know, we, we quoted the scripture out of Isaiah where the, the child would be there at the, the hole of the snake, the, the Adler, but not be afraid. Everything would be different. Uh, animals will not eat other animals. They will all go back to just simply vegetation. Just a place like it was uh, before the flood, before the curse, really, and, and, and really a good time here on the earth. Now, in the very first part of chapter 20, for this to happen, something the, the, the Antichrist and the false prophet were taken and judged and thrown into the lake of fire. That's the last place for the unbeliever. So the Antichrist, the false prophet, they, go, they do not pass go. They go straight to jail. They go straight to the lake of fire for all of you Monopoly fans, right? They went straight to the lake of fire. But Satan, God had a different plan for Satan. Look what it says in verse 1. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit. That means now that it is locked. And a great chain in his hand. Anytime you look at this and you see the adjective there, if we would think of a chain, I've got a couple pretty heavy chains at the farm and, you know, I use them around, you know, and, and I can pull, pretty much pull up anything or drag anything around, you know, us guys and our tractors and we like to, to do all that kind of stuff. But here this is a different type chain and, and it says a great chain. Now, let me just put Brian's added adage to this. This is a chain that will not be broken. I think that's why he's putting that there. This is a chain, but this is a breakless chain. It's a great chain, all right? So he says, and he laid hold of the dragon. Now, that's what, I believe that was uh, Revelation 12. He was called the dragon, right? Uh, that serpent of old. When you think of a serpent, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Well, on the earth now, what do you think of as a serpent? Snake? Anything else come to your mind? Scorpion? I, I think of that as well. <clears throat> I mean, a scorpion that really have, when God gave us a scorpion, they don't have too many wonderful things they go around doing, but they can sure sting you. I'm also told it's a very terrible sting. Never been st stung by one, so I don't know. But he's called a serpent. I don't think of too many things good about a serpent, do you? There's really no great quality of Satan. I understand Ezekiel 28. At one time, he was full of wisdom and beauty. Didn't say that he was all beauty. Didn't say that he knew everything. He was full of wisdom, but he was not omniscient. He did not know all. People have asked me, and they say sometimes, does, does Satan hear your prayers if you don't verbalize them? And I said, no. He doesn't know your thoughts. They can put thoughts into your mind, but they cannot read your mind. All right? That should give you great comfort. Also, let me just throw this in here. This is free. If you really want to get on Satan's nerves, pray out loud. Let those demons that are around you hear your praise for God. If you want to get, put them in a bad mood, let them hear the praises of God. Amen? So if you just feel kind of spunky one day and you just want to just uh, poke your fingers in a demon's eye, pray out loud. Amen? It'll make you feel better as well. But understand, he, is, he was created with, with, with beauty, but he lost it. In sin. Sin takes away the beauty out of everything. I mean, there can be a, well, I, I, I had breakfast this morning with Jimmy Eccles, Janice's, Janice um, Dale's brother. And uh, he said the most beautiful picture in all the world. He, he asked, he said, I thought about this. He said the most beautiful picture that we have in all the world is a mother with a baby. And I thought, well, amen. Amen. You know, just have the, the nurturing of the mother, the beauty of that, that baby. He said that's the most beautiful picture we have in all the world. But that baby's going to grow up, and um, guess what? It's going to be a sinner that's going to talk back, right, and, and, and do things purposefully wrong. That's, there's beauty, but sin always takes away beauty, all right? So here, Satan is called a dragon. He is called uh, a serpent. He, he says, who is the devil? That is the deceiver 
and Satan, that is, Satan means the accuser of the brethren. And he bound him with that chain for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more. I'm going to pause right there. A bottomless pit. How can a God create something that has no bottom on it? Well, we don't know that there is an end to the galaxies that are out there. Matter of fact, as we study the galaxies that are out there, y'all remember when we were talking about a light year and how many, uh, uh, how, uh, that's how far a uh, light could travel when we think of, um, what is it? I want to say 640,000 uh, miles per second. That's not correct. I'm saying that wrong. Somebody online is going to Google this and they're going to call one of y'all and tell me what the speed of light is. But it's, the speed of light is how much light travels per second. And if you did that for an entire year, that's called a light year. And we think of the galaxies that are out there. If you start on one side of that galaxy to move to the other galaxies, they're saying that it's trillions of light years from one side to the other. Now, when we look at this time here for the millennium, it's a thousand years. Now, is that a thousand years of 24 hours a day? I do not know and neither do you. Because time is going to change a little bit because the age is going to change a little bit. It'll be like it was before the flood. Um, they will live, the life expectancy won't be 80, 90 years, whatever it is now, right? So that part will change. Peter says, with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years as a thousand years is one day. It's not important. When he tells us a thousand years, because there are numbers that are there that count. When we talk about the time in the rap, before the rapture, in the tribulation, he is very specific on dates, right? But here he just says a thousand years. Now, could it be a thousand years of 365 days a year? In the Bible, they count it 360 days a year. Could very well be. The thing is, is that I don't know and you don't know, but God knows. And he gave us a time frame where there would be this time where Christ would reign on earth. Y'all good with that? And during that time, the exact, here's the point of it. During the time that Christ will reign on earth, somebody just quoted in once, and now they're going to tell us what a light year is. How much is it, Ernie? They don't know. They didn't tell you. All right. 186,000 per second. Thank you. See, that's why we're church. We do things together. All right. So, now where was I? What? The time on earth is the same time when, uh, that Satan will be bound. All right, for whatever time that we're going to be that thousand years on earth and we're going to be working with Christ, Christ will reign, for that same time Satan will be held by these chains in a pit. Did God put him in a galaxy out there where he's just going to be there uh, from one side to the other? Maybe just let him fall through the skies. I don't know. But God has a place for him that, that Satan does not want to be, right? And think about this chain. He's chained in this bottomless pit, Right? And, and he can't go anywhere. And all he's got to do is think. All he's got to do is think. So here it says, he, will, he is put in the uh, bottomless pit, shut him up, sealed him, so that he cannot deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. Here's the obvious question people ask. They'll say, why in the world you got him? Why didn't you go ahead and throw him in the lake of fire? I mean, he's, he's no good. Everything Satan touches is for the glory of sin. It's for the ugliness. He wants to steal, to kill, and destroy. So why would God give him another chance? Why would God release him from this bottomless pit and let him go out into this earth where Christ has been reigning for a thousand years and begin to do what Satan does? He is the accuser of the brethren. That means he's going to come back and start bad-mouthing Christ. He's going to start twisting the truths of Christ. 
And remember what I've, I've said it so many times here. I've said Satan always attacks relationships. Now, during that thousand years, there will be people who were... Um, that, who did not take the mark of the beast, but were not believers, who continue to live during the millennium. Some will become believers and give their heart and their life to Christ during that time. Others, I don't know why it is about our human spirit, but others will not. And by the way, at, at the end here, this, this group of people that Satan goes and he badmouths Christ about, accuses Christ, he gets a following, it says that it will be like the sand of the sea. That's a lot of people. So here again, let's go back to our point. Why is it that God allowed him this opportunity to go back and deceive again? And I believe it's for this. Listen well. Because he is a patient, long-suffering, and kind God. I will quote you again the verse from Peter. He is not willing that any should perish, but all to come to repentance. God's heart is for a relationship with everyone. Now you come into a relationship with a holy God by repenting of your sins and asking God to do for you, to cleanse you, to make you whole, to make you part of his family. You become a follower of him. But there will be some that will not. Lance, I don't know why. They just want to, they, they, my, my biggest sin in my life is my pride. It is my Achilles heel. It always has been, probably always will be. Because it's not just pride, but it's all the things that my pride lead me to. And, and it's the, all the idolatry. Idolatry is a sin of pride. When you, you want something else that you call God rather than a holy God. And, and Satan knows how to twist those things. Now I say that he'll do it to them, but that's what he's doing today. We need to understand this. When he is released then, he will go back and be who he is. When he is at work today, he is being who he is. How many of y'all watched the, 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 the spat last night? They called it a debate, but it was a fuss. It, it was a fuss. That's a, uh, and and I, I can tell you that before this all started, there was going to be 47% of America that was going to vote this way and 47% of the people that were going to vote this way and really that 6% who had made up their mind in the, you know, in the middle, y'all know what I'm talking about? It, we're divided as a country. And matter of, to hear the fuss last night, there's not too much that anybody's going to agree about anything. And how, how is all of these things going to happen? Listen, we live in a world of sin where Satan is always about tearing down. How is it that people that can be so close lose all that? It's the work of Satan. The Bible says that we are in a spiritual battle. Are you listening? Spiritual warfare. How many of y'all have felt that? How many of you have, have found yourself vulnerable to that? How many have found yourself tired and weary from that? How many of you... Uh, Things are going on in your life, and it seems like there's this huge storm and all that, and you have to almost pause and say, hold on. We're not warring against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, about spiritual rulers of darkness in high places. Understand that those things are there, and when Satan is released, he will go to empower through accusation, gossip. He will empower through lies. He will, he will try to tear down. By the way, you need to understand, that's exactly what he's doing today. Don't fall for it. Don't get into it at all. Well, after these things, he must be released for a little while. Verse 4, and I saw thrones. Now, here, is, verse 1, 2, and 3 is what happens to Satan during that millennium. Verse 4, I saw thrones and they that sat on them and judgment was committed to them. This is during the millennium. I saw the souls of who have been beheaded for their witness to Jesus. That was during the tribulation. And for the word of God, those people who were martyred for Christ's sake, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, 
They lived and they reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Think about that. They were so devoted to Christ that, that they were threatened, that they would be beaten, persecuted, killed, martyred, and they didn't care. They loved Christ more. And now, after they've been through all that, all the terror of it, they gave their life, Christ gave their life for them, they gave their life for Christ. And now they've been given this special place of reigning with Christ. Think about this. Why would God cannot step off the throne? Amen? We cannot limit God. He's God. He's more powerful. There's nothing we could do to limit him. But he can, can limit himself. He gives authority in this earth to us. Every one of us have authority, God-given authority. Every one of us, listen to me now, have responsibilities that go with that. And with, with what God has entrusted to us, I love this phrase, we are stewards. God has given us these gifts. Someone said to me, you know, they, they said, I, I love to hear you preach. And I'm like, hold on, hold on. They, they were almost trying to lift me up. And I'm like, look, if it is a gift from God, then he deserves it, right? It, it's all for his glory. It hasn't got anything to do with me. When you are doing something that God gifted you to do, you don't take the glory for that. You give it to him. You've just been entrusted. So if, if you were given a, a certain amount of money and you were supposed to be good stewards of that money, you would invest that money, you would, you would take care of that money, you would be judged if you did it wisely, right? You do that because it's been given to you and you use it for his glory, amen? They will reign with him. Verse 5, the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. That is, those who were dead who uh, uh, unbelievers, they had the rapture of the saints, that's already occurred from, uh, from Abel forward and to the last soul that, that got saved and then they came up in the rapture of the church. Those that were uh, there who were saved during the tribulation, they were taken up when Jesus came back. They were blessed as well. Uh, but those, it says in verse, at the end of verse five, this is the first resurrection. Now, not those that will be resurrected later at the great white, th wait, great white throne judgment. Not those. But understand that those, uh, those verses there, when, when, that, when, when John heard this and pinned it down, those numbers and verses were not there. That was put in there later. So look at the end of verse 5, and it says this is the first re resurrection. Look at the first of uh, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first, resur first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God uh, and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Let me talk to you real quick about this, and I'm just going to stop here. Hear me. First resurrection. I'm alive. Okay? I die. Sorry, Lynn. But with the rapture of the church, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Amen? Amen? Then, and, and Lynn's going to live till then. Then she will be changed in the twinkling of an eye, and she'll go up and be, meet in the clouds, and we'll go up, right? So the dead in Christ, from Abel forward, then those who are alive, they're changed, and we go back to be in heaven. We do not die again. Let me say it again. We don't die again. We had one resurrection. One. What about those who um, are unbelievers. They're going to live and they're going to die and they're going to be resurrected and judged and then they're going to be cast from God's presence into a place called the lake of fire. That is called the second resurrection the second death though they will live forever amen they will be resurrected but they will res they will they will die forever die is not the right word they will live forever in the uh 
lake of fire. So there's, if you, uh, if you were born twice, you'll die once. If you're born once, you'll die twice. Does that make sense? If you're born twice, that means you were born a physical life and you were born a spiritual life and you only have to die one time. Die to this earth, you never die again. But, it, but, if, you were, but you, if, if you were only born once to this earth like a baby, then you're going to die twice, physically and spiritually. I'm still hadn't got us through the millennium yet, have I? I got two, no, I'm not going to do it. Because if I do, it'll be 10 minutes. Lance, would you go turn us off, please, sir? I knew that there was no way I was going to judge my time tonight. So I just decided I was just going to take off and just stop. Y'all good with that? You got any questions? No questions? Y'all pretty y'all got it all figured out. Say it again. I had a question about I I got it. Yeah. They're still dead. Uh when the rapture of the church, they're still dead. They will, they, they, will, they will rise, they will, be, they will be risen and judged at the great white throne judgment and then they'll have the spiritual death of going to the lake of fire. Living in death is a good way of putting it. I like that. Marriage? Mansions, we're not there yet. Let me get to chapter 21, chapter 22. Uh, let, let, me, let me share one part of, of that. Because I think I, I think I said this last week, but um, so many people are looking for the new heaven and the new earth um, of chapters 21 and chapter 22. And when you hear them talk, uh, when... Jimmy lost Valvereth, and, and she passed, and uh, that couple had been together all the time. If, if you hear people talk, it's almost like they're going to chapter 21 and chapter 22, the, fee, the city four square where the streets are gold and the walls are jasper and the, the, the 12 gates, that city four square, 1,500 miles wide, 1,500 miles uh, long, 1,500 miles tall, the, the, the walls are 200 and 16 feet thick. I mean, we, we think of all of those things. That ain't happening yet. My mom and dad are in heaven. They're not in that city yet. That, they're, they're, in, they're in the place that's called the grave right now. They're, 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 in, the, they're in the place with the Lord. Uh, it's called Abraham's bosom and Luke. Um, so that, they, they are there in the presence of the Lord. No soul sleep. In the presence of the Lord, absent from the body, presence with the Lord. Where is heaven now? That's where they are. The, the, the one thing that you hear about heaven now is the throne. Ezekiel talks about that throne having a sea of glass. Also, uh, Revelations 4 talks about the throne with the sea of glass. It's almost as, and it talks about the, those souls that were martyred being under the throne. And it's like, um, uh, when, even, and I'm, if I'm not careful, I'm going to go too long here. Um, Ezekiel 38, when it talks about um, uh, Satan, and, and it, it talks about um, he was the guarding cherub who covers he was the one who was kind of like the protector of heaven, almost as if he was the gatekeeper of being in the presence of God. It's like the throne that you hear so much about. Um, he could not, you just didn't walk into the presence of God. You didn't walk into the presence of the king. You had to go through the gatekeeper. And that was probably Lucifer's job before he, he sinned. But uh, uh, being in that place now of being 
on that top part in the presence. That's what we hear about um, heaven today, is just simply being around the throne in the presence of God. But when, for, for my parents that are already in heaven, when the rapture of the church comes, they'll get their new body, um, they'll go back to heaven, we'll have the marriage supper of the Lamb, going to be good. And then uh, when he comes back to the earth the second time, we'll all come with him and we will reign with him on earth for that thousand years. This is not the last time I'm going to talk about all this. If I'm your pastor for a while, we'll go through it all again at some point in time. But um, I got going on Wednesday nights with this God of the resurrection and it's, been, it's taken us a while. Let me pray us out and we'll go. Lord, I thank you for the, being the God of the resurrection. You're the only God who has life. You hold life. You keep life. You give life. I pray, Lord, for those people who do not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. They were born once, but, Lord, I don't want them to die twice. I don't want them to die physically and spiritually. And, Lord, I thank you for saving me where I will die once physically, but I'll never die spiritually. Thank you for being that kind of a God. Give us a heart for souls. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.